You're late. Sorry, I was just discussing some workplace issues with the design team. Yes, yes, I'm sure that's very interesting. Joe, where are we at? So far we're well within budget. Tickets went on sale a couple of days ago and attendance is very promising. We'll be ready for bump in tomorrow. Vic? Um, yeah, right, uh, the cast is organised and off script, all props and costumes have been sourced and most are here. Lighting and sound cues have been discussed, but we can't really do more until we're in the space. So we'll be ready to go on in six days? Easily. Should be okay. Well, I think we deserve a pat on the back for all of our hard work. So, is there anything else we need to discuss? We should start organising the curtain call. So how should we go about it? The actors go on stage, bow, then go off stage. It's not rocket science. I know that. But we should decide the way in which they bow. That's a good point. We don't want it to look messy. They could come on one at a time, then go off stage. Or they could all come on and step forward when it's their turn to bow. Or they could all bow at the same time. Maybe they bow once on their own and then all bow together at the end. That sounds like a good idea. I feel like they should do coordinated synchronized movements that lead into the bows. The actors using interpretive dance to signify the characters they play. That might be difficult. How so? Well, when you think about it, the set you wanted for this production is to be as authentic as possible. And your point is? There's too much furniture in the way. Meaning? Maybe we should get Charlie to talk about how your vision will work in the space. Just letting you guys know that the antique clock you ordered has arrived. Charlie, perfect timing. What prop do I have to search for now? Oh no, Charlie, you're needed for something far more vital than just gathering props. Wow, glad to know you appreciate what I do for the show. So you all know how important you are. Sam just likes to create drama. Okay, what do I need? Sam has some pretty original ideas for how they want to stage the uh, curtain call. I want there to be fluid, ostentatious movements. Let's that... keep it as short as possible. Fine. I want there to be coordinated movements to signify the coming together of our show when the actors bow. I'm confused. Do you want them to dance into their bows? Dance only vaguely implies the gravitas that I want during the curtain call. So you don't want them to dance? No. What Sam is saying is we want to know if with all of the set pieces and the props, if there is enough space for the actors to do a coordinated movement for their curtain call. Short answer, no. Long answer, no way. Is that it? Yes, Charlie, that's all that's required of you. You've been entirely useless in this process. You may leave. Right, thanks. I'll go store the clock then. Sorry, Charlie. You didn't have to be so rude. Well, she was less than helpful. How about we move on? Maybe talk about the lights we want instead. We should probably keep it simple, just so that Chris doesn't have to work. I'm envisioning a spectacular face for the eyes. I want the stage to shimmer as if giant glitter cannons have just gone off and the lights will start out ordinary, then LEDs will come on in every colour. I don't think we have that many LEDs. My creative juices are flowing and then the spotlights will circle the stage with a flourish, collect on the actors as they bow and as the audience claps, ultraviolet light will dance across the back of the stage. Maybe I should text Chris about what's actually possible with the lights soon after. You must. Yeah, Chris, we just wanted to know what lighting effects we can have for the curtain call. I want it to be grand so that everyone remembers my vision. I want... Let's just see what lights we have first. Chris? Well, we have eight regular lights, six LEDs that we can play around with. There are a couple of downsides, though. Uh, the LEDs are all hooked up to the same track and the other lights can't be changed from the lighting booth. Are you out to ruin my day? Why? Wow, what's wrong? You've just sabotaged my entire vision. How am I supposed to symbolically convey the beauty of the production when I can't even have a rainbow of light at the end? Look, 
Sam, I'm sorry that the vision in your head isn't going to come true, but I'm doing the best with what I have been given at the venue you hired. Well, that's not good enough. Well, what's the point of being a, getting a lighting designer if they can't even design the lighting that you want? Look, there's only so much I can do. If you wanted more fancy lights, maybe you should have rented a space that had better equipment. We haven't even been in the space yet. Maybe we should hold off on making a decision until then. It's not an acceptable way to talk to one of your members. They're trying their best, you know? Well, my production needs to be better than the best. What's the benefit of a great production if everyone you work with ends up miserable? Now, now, everyone. Let's all take a deep breath and move on to something else. The lights can be figured out later and we'll figure out the way the bads are done at the next rehearsal. Uh, why don't we think about uh, the order of the bows instead? How do we decide that? Well, obviously the least important actor bows first and the most important bows last. What makes one actor more important than another? How do you even begin to choose? Well, the most important is the central character, the me of the actors. What Sam's saying is the actor who plays the character most important to the development of the story is the one who bows last. But we don't have one main character. We have three actors on stage pretty much the entire time developing the story. And one actor who plays four different characters that come and go. Well, then by that logic, it's the person who plays the four parts that would bow first. Makes sense. Should we then arrange the other three alphabetically by name? or character to the side. That would be disastrous. There's nothing like the bruised ego of an actor to derail an entire production. What if, to counter that, we give each actor their own soundtrack to bow to? Joe, get Kim in here now. Okay, but let's keep an open mind about what will actually be possible for the soundtrack. What can I do for you? Kim, you know how terribly egotistical actors can be when it comes to claiming their five seconds of fame? I don't think they could be any worse than you. I've seen a few temper, temper, temper tantrums in my time, sure. Well, I've come up with the most perfect solution in regards to keeping everyone happy when it comes to our curtain call. No kidding. I thought it would be great to provide each actor with their own theme music so that no matter what the order for the bows end up being, they'll each have their own distinctive track to highlight them as an individual. Don't you think that could get a little, I don't know, chaotic? It only takes each person a few seconds to step forward, bow, then step back. I think it would just come off as messy and unprofessional to have so many different tracks playing one after the other. I get that. The whole curtain call would feel really jarring up against the slickness of the rest of the play. It'd be really silly to ruin the feel of the whole production just so that some actors don't go all diva on us. Maybe if we change who bows when each night so that everyone gets a chance to be first and last. Oh, that is utterly ridiculous. You can't have the actor who plays the four bit characters bowing after the me of the actors. Kim. It can't be that hard to edit together four different pieces of music to enable everyone to have their own moment to shine. I would think that if they didn't take the opportunity to shine within the production, no amount of theme music is going to change that. Get out! Get out now! Kim was just stating the truth, Sam, and I agree with Joe. Having a different director bow first and last each night sounds like a really fair way to run the show. Are you the director, Vic? No. Would you like to be the director? Look, Sam, I'm because not it trying seems to- Because to me that you're trying to undermine my efforts with the design team. Sam- And that's not what she's doing at all. I'm not interested in being the director. I just want a fairer workplace. You can be so ungrateful sometimes. You know that, Vic? I just came back from the best op shop trip yet. There was this insane yellow velvet trench coat that I thought would be perfect for 
uh, am I interrupting something here? No, Ash, go on. Tell us about what you found. It's not a problem, Joe. I can come back later when everything isn't so tense. You'd never come back. I wonder at your such a tight little clique you've surrounded yourself with, Vic, rallying for your little coup d'etat. I really think I should come back later. Stay right where you are. You'll be the first to report to your little team about how I got the upper hand on this trader just like Jesus did Judas. That's not how the Bible story ends. I'm not finished. Oh, yes, you are. Vic, please. No, Joe. I'm finally going to have my say. I was late to our meeting today because I was busy defending you to the design team. They think you're a bully, a control freak, someone who steps all over other people to feel better. But I said to them that you're distressed. Isn't that right, Ash? Hey, don't drag me into this. Vic, why don't we just calm down? Aren't you tired of kissing Sam's ass? I know I am. And we've tried to do what we tried to do here today is to make a simple plan for how the curtain call done. And yet Sam's thrown in as many problems as they can to try to derail this. I've had enough. Oh, don't say it. I quit. You'll regret this. <laughs> no, I won't. Well, if Vic quits, so do I. And I'm keeping the yellow velvet trench coat. I bought it for me anyway. Charlie just quit. And Chris. Thank him. I'm starting to think maybe we shouldn't have a curtain call. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah.